Antilila of Kanai Balai Slab Pundarik Vidinidi, and we heard yesterday about in the Swapna or dream, Jagannath and Baladev, they slapped him in the f uh, cheeks and mouth because with that same mouth uh, that afternoon he laughed. Damodar Srup and he were laughing. Especially he was laughing at the servants of the Lord who were not being uh, behaving properly by offering what he thought was improper behavior, offering Lord Jagannath starch cloth. And then we're hearing now some <coughs> comments of Vrindavan Das Thakur about dreams. Text 150. Shastiva Prasada Prabhu Swapne Jaraikari Jai Jari Shakshat Loke Deki Faladari. He says, Vrindavan Das Thakur if Lord Krishna punishes or bestows mercy on someone in a dream, the results are seen by everyone. We commented on that yesterday, that uh, in this case he was punished and he brought back from that Leela, Svartna Vilas with Lord Jagannath, he brought back to this plane, conscious plane, some results of that pastime, his cheeks were actually swollen and reddish and fingerprints were there, finger marks of the Lord. He felt so fortunate to receive the touch of the Lord. And we cited examples of Srinivas Acharya and other contemporary Vaishnavas who in their Lila Pravesh and their meditation they went into the Nitya Lila because they're Prani Bhaktas and they experienced uh, the pastime Holy Lila or offering perfume in one case, in one instance, and then they came to external consciousness in this plane of Sadaka Rup and left their Manjri Siddhas Rup behind in their Spurti and when they came back to this Sadaka Rup external plane it was seen they had colors on their cloth and perfume and the atmosphere so the so it was quite obvious that something happened and it was an interaction with the Lord and their Spurti or here it's a dream Sakshate se iya sabha bhujaha vichare eje yavana gane ninda him sakare taharo swapne yano bhava matcha chahi ninda him sakare deki swapna nahi pai. By analyzing this incident, one can directly understand that because the yavanas engage in blasphemy and violence, they can never see the Lord in their dreams even if they want to. So the uh, the Lord, to see the Lord in the dream is not an ordinary event. And he's talking at one level, he's talking about Nitya Parishads or advanced Premi Bhaktas to have such an experience. Although many times new devotees will say, oh, I saw Krishna in my dream last night. I dreamed. I dreamed of Radharani. And when this uh, question, this dialogue, this idea was brought up to one guru here at Radhakund, he laughed. When the disciples said, "Oh Guruji, many of my god brothers and god sisters are saying that I, uh, they're dreaming of Radharani, mm -hmm. and they're only newly initiated. What to make of that?" And the guru laughed and he said, "Yes." They're eating fruit without planting a seed. <laughs> so unless you plant a seed and get a tree which bears fruits, you can't eat any fruits. He said they're relishing fruit and they haven't planted a seed. And he said such experiences are maybe seen as dreams, but they're actually sporty v sporty or sakshat darshan. And they can begin they can begin to manifest by the will of the Lord when a devotee rises to the plane of Bhava, which generally doesn't happen a day after initiation. But it may happen in some cases. We see that in Jaiva Dharma that how much power the Guru transmitted to the disciples, but admittedly that's quite rare. But the Yavanas can never have that experience. Yavanara he kidhaya J Brahmana Sajan. Tarajata Parada Kari Anakshan. Aparada 
हरि दुई लोक के दुख पाए सब नहीं हो भक्त पापिश तेरे ही न शिक्षाएं What to speak of yavanas, even respectable brahmanas, who constantly commit offenses, attain miseries in this life, and in the next as a result of their offenses. Yet the Lord does not teach such sinful non-devotees in their dreams. The Supreme Lord always remains aloof from either rewarding or punishing non-devotees. But since he is a well-wisher of devotees, he rectifies his dear devotee by punishing him in his dream. We mentioned that yesterday, that the devotees often, they experience their prabdha karma, because prabdha means that which is to fructify in this very life, the enjoyment and suffering, depending on what fruits they are. And for most people, all people, that will be on the external plane of the body and senses. But for devotees, many times, Krishna will arrange everything to happen in a dream, because prabdha is a dream anyway. <laughs> Prabhupada is a dream which we identify with. But uh, we'll have a dream and then we have an opportunity in the dream to remember Krishna or forget him. And it's an examination. Our Prabhupada examine, uh, examines us and ordinarily we would have to face that externally and either pass the test or not, but often it happens in a dream. And then Krishna removes that karma by successfully encountering it in a dream. But it says here, he's talking again about offenses, whether you're a Yavana or a respectable Brahmana, if you commit offenses, you'll be miserable as a result of your offenses in this life and even next. And Krishna won't even uh, teach such sinful devotees even in their dreams. So this is a fact that Krishna does teach in a dream Guru also teaches in dreams sometimes, but it should be confirmed, Guru Shastra and Sadhu. I studied the example once in a class of some fellow in Delhi mm -hmm. who said, oh, you're regu I'm regularly dreaming of you while you were in Puri, and you're telling me I, I sh can do like this and that. And I said, oh, really? Mm -hmm. I don't think I would never, yeah, well, it's now I'm here in front of you, and don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That whatever whatever dream guru you had, dream image of me you had in your mental uh, factory, that I'm the reality is right before you. So forget about that dream and follow what I'm saying right here. Write it down. Swapne pratyadesha prabhu karina janahari say say e mahabhagyena mani apanari. A person who receives instructions from the Lord in a dream considers himself most fortunate. Now, if you consider that the Guru is the Sakshadhari, and he is the Kripa Shakti Murti of the Lord, and he is a delegated representative of the Lord, and he is the external or internal, if he's the external representation of the Chaita Guru, speaking and leading you in your life, guiding you, then certainly he can also be the internal representation of the Guru. In the fourth canto, one purport I like, Prabhupada says that when one meets with the spir his spiritual master and speaks with him, he should consider that he's hearing directly from the super soul. So, so many places it says the Guru represents Chaita Guru, and when one realizes the non difference of Sri Guru and the Guru in the heart and the non-difference between these five forms of Krishna the Archa, Murti and the Paramatma the Vaibha Prakash and Swayam Prakash and the Guru then he'll actually see and every mantra he chants he'll see the Guru there's one statement of Prana that says one should see the mantra in the Guru and the Guru in the mantra which means ultimately the Guru is the window to Krishna we say, Prabhupada said, these paintings done by the Iskand artists are windows to the spiritual world. Because we read about Radharani's in Man, and she has a certain look on her face, and someone captures that in a painting, and maybe it makes more of an impression or a samskar. When we see a painting of that Leela, or the Ras Leela, we may read, oh, Ras Leela, 
there was a circular rasa dance, a circular dance performed by men and women. Ras lila, a circular dance performed by men and women. So you can try to think, but you see some painting of Krishna holding an uh, arm like this and like that, and then you can think more deeply, envision this scene from the spiritual world. So therefore, it's aptly said that paintings are window panes to the spiritual world. So this is, he says it, if the person receives instructions from the Lord in a dream, he's very fortunate. Bhagya. Swapnai Upadesh. Prati Upadesh. Prabhu Kani Najahari. There is a book that's been recently published by one sannyasi, mm -hmm. and it says there that one can it's a secret transmission between the heart of the guru and the heart of the disciple. It's not by mantra, it's not by words, it's not by dreams. He's not backing this statement up with any Shastrik Praman, but he's saying like this, that the revelation of one Siddhadeya, this is how he understands it, although he doesn't show any proof for that. He said, it's not by mantra, it's not that someone can sit you down and tell you. So obviously he's trying to eliminate various processes by which one receives awareness and understanding of his eternal spiritual form. And he said, it's just a secret mystical transmission from the heart of the guru to the heart of the disciple. But now here we find in the Shastra Praman of Vrindavan Das Thakur, that the Lord gives instructions, upadesh, in a dream. Where this uh, recent book is invalidating dreams as a source of contact with transcendence. Dreams don't count. It's imaginary. It's not acceptable. But the heart counts. So I thought there was some flaw in the logic. Because how do you define the, the, what is happening in the heart and what is happening in the dream? The heart's experience of a mystical reception of identity or mantra or name or etc. What is the difference between that and something happening in the depth of a dream? This is uh, something to consider. So if the Lord can instruct in a dream and the Guru represents the Lord, Chaitanya Guru, then can the Guru also instruct in a dream? And the answer, of course, is yes. So that gets back to, because in this particular contemporary book it says it's not by dreams, then one can only think of someone that he may even know who's received instructions in a dream, or maybe even himself, from his guru. And they're valid and real and quite uh, clear. And even the whole life can be guided by those instructions but this person is trying to say something different <laughs> and making it, look very, making it look very official, couching it in a per certain kind of presentation. But here, that uh, because we can't say on one side that the Sarva Deva Maya Guru, that the Guru has all the power of the demigods, the Guru is the super soul, the Guru is me, the Guru is more than me. He's a Kripa Shakti Murti. I can instruct in dreams, and I, but the Guru can't. There's not logic here. But then, as I mentioned, the Guru may instruct one in a dream, but then there should be some uh, praman for that, which we're seeing here and, and many other places also and there should be some confirmation of the content and instruction one has received in a dream by uh, seeing the tradition and seeing the shastras, Guru Shastra and Sadhu are the three checks and balances that are usually applied to determine whether the dream instruction is imaginary or real. It's a delicate point. Sakshate apane swapne marila tahare e prasade sabhi deki shri prema nidire 
evidence of the mercy of Sri Sri Prem Nidhi received when he was beaten by the Lord could be seen by everyone. So earlier he said that if the Lord punishes someone or blesses them in a dream, everyone can see the results. So if you come to the temple tomorrow with a black eye <laughs> and you was actually created by your wife in a, in a heated argument, you can't say, you can't try to fool us and tell us that Giraj appeared in your dream and bopped you. Because <laughs> you're looking at the wrong things and so I gave you a bop and an eye. We may, we may not believe it. <laughs> but the results that he was beaten by the Lord, we may see, the re it may be evident to everyone in the marketplace that you were beaten the night before by your wife. <laughs> But Tabe Pundarika Deva Utila Prabhate Charigala Pulijachi Deki Dui Hate. When Pundrik Vidinidi got up in the morning, he could feel with his hands that his cheeks were swollen. It's a fact that when someone experiences the Lord, then it's understood and perceived by everyone. I cited once before the example of the Pajari years ago, 1991, some years ago, and Sevakunja, Radhadamadar Temple, was a young man from Bengal, unmarried. He was doing a puja, and one day he made bog offering, and the curtains were closed, and he came out <coughs> and sat in the Darshan Mandap, facing north with his left shoulder to the deity. And he was, did pranayam, because he follows it, kind of strict rules. Did, did this Anulom uh, Vilom, <coughs> then he chanted Gayatri. And all of a sudden he, he, he started screaming, ah, ah, like this. And, uh, and then he got up and ran away. The story I told and then I came out, and then Goswami came out, Nirmal Chan Goswami, the Sevite, Takuji Sevite. I said, what happened, what happened? He said, oh, I, I think maybe the Pajari had Darshan Radharani. It happens sometimes. <laughs> he said like that. He made it sound like it happens, you know, regularly. And I said, oh, what, I mean, okay, well, where'd he go? He said, I don't know, he ran away. Maybe he comes back, maybe not. <laughs> So then uh, he was just disturbed because he had to do, finish the offering. So then he finished the offering, they closed the temple, locked the doors. Then we got the report about 2 o'clock or 1.30, they came and they banged on the doors, opened the temple. There was a bunch of people and they had found the Pajari and he was trying to climb the doors, boundary wall of Nidiban and his ecstasy to go in there, which was closed in the afternoon. And they recognized him as Damodar's Pajari, so they brought him back. So they opened the doors and, and brought him back in. And he just sat in front of the, the, the closed deity doors <coughs> and just sat there looking like this, a very different look on his face. And then uh, it was time for, for the e afternoon puja, and he was still a little dysfunctional in his own trance. And the Goswami came out and he said, oh, Guy's useless. <laughs> so then he got somebody to do the puja. And then for several days he was just there like this. And then the word spread around very fast that Pajariji had Radharani's darshan. So then people, he was just sitting there day and night, just sitting there in the same spot where he had darshan looking like this. And everyone could see that something happened, no doubt. And people, innocent, simple people, and many people were coming up to touch his feet, and he was saying, no, no! He w when they come touch his feet, he would get very uh, angry and jump back and say, no, no, don't touch. Don't get, that. get out, get out. And he was just like this. So we saw that, and I, I asked the Goswami, I said, how many times this happened here? He said, well, one Pajoy before, about 10 years ago, he saw, it. and then, this person sat there for a few days, this recent one, 
Then one day he was gone. I said, where did he went? He said, I don't know, maybe wandering around Brudge or something, looking for Radharani. And he, he spoke so matter-of-factly. And then after that, I started to pray to Damodar. I was starting, because I, I was always thinking that if you come to Vrindavan, you should have Darshan of Radharani or Krishna. This is the place to have Darshan. And then I, th but then I thought, oh, but if I have Darshan, I'll go crazy like this. <laughs> And I run away and we go just puggle in the forest or something. And then I, so then I was thinking, well, maybe I, but then I was, there was two minds. Maybe I don't want darshan. <laughs> if this is, if I get darshan, I go crazy. Then, but then I thought, anyway, that's, if it's up to her, whatever she wants to do. If, if she gives me darshan makes me crazy, then I'm, I'm already crazy without her darshan. <laughs> so I, I uh, I asked the Goswami, I said, is there any chance, I said, he said several Pajaris, I said, well, I'm staying here now, is there any chance that I may get Darsh Darshan Radharani? He said, could be, let's see. And he laughed. <laughs> so I I didn't get Darshan, but it was like this, so his cheeks were all swollen, and everybody could see that. And he wasn't married, so they knew it wasn't his wife. Pratidina Damodara Swarupasya Jagnatha Deki Dona Eka Sangai That doesn't get anything by the way. Leave that in as it is. <laughs> so Damodara would come every day and the two would go together to see Lord Jagannath. So they were a pair, they were an inseparable pair. Surv Damodar and Pundri Vidinity, they would go together and see the Lord. Now they're going together again to see the Lord. And last time they went, the day before, that's when he got in trouble. But now maybe... And he didn't have any hard feelings. Usually if someone beats you up, you don't want to see them the next day. <laughs> if you get in a fight at night and somebody knocks you silly, <coughs> you're not going to go take his... <laughs> next day you're not going <laughs> to... You're not going to get your friend and say, well, let's go see that... Are you crazy? He, beat, he boxed your ears, now you want to go have darshan? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're crazy. You might do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but here, in the past times of the Lord, there's no hard feelings. <laughs> Forgive and forget. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so he went the next day. I mean, it's a little surprising. If if your lover slaps you, they may you know sometimes you don't you don't answer the call for a couple of days. You know this is standard, and it was called Prem Kalaha, lovers quarrel. You see Jagannath Pandit and Mahaprabhu they got in some argument, and, and Jagai he went back to his kutir and he locked the door and said forget it I'm not I'm not I don't want to see you. He was in Man like Satyabama, and several days two or three days, he was just three days. And then Lord Chaitanya was thinking, oh, Jagai, is, he's really mad. He's unhappy. And then then he thought by three days he'd probably cooled down. So then he, he told uh, Govinda Das or someone, he said, go tell Jagai I'm very, very hungry, and he should cook me a feast. <laughs> it's like the husband and wife have arguments sometimes, Satyabhama and Dwarkadish. And, and Satyabhama goes and locks herself up in the Kope Bhavan, because she can't cope. She can't cope with her husband, so she locks herself in the Kope Bhavan, which is a special anger anger room. When the queen is angry with the king, she just locks the key in. He can't get in, and he has to understand where he went wrong and what he did wrong, and amend his ways and rectify his, uh, his behavior, and come with a straw between his teeth and lots of gold bangles and, and a big box of sweets and all kinds of sweet words, and flatter his queen, and she may open the door. I if he can get by the maidservants first. So then the news went to Jagai that uh, Mahaprabhu is very hungry and, and he wants to eat your cooking. Then Jagai abandoned all his anger and man, immediately started cooking a wonderful feast. But here, Pandrik Vidyanidhi was slapped, severely beaten by not only Jagannath but Balaram too. They ganged up on him two on one. Mm. And uh, still, he, he's, he's not afraid to go see him again the next day. Pratyaha aise sarupa seidinaila asiya tan hake kichu kaite lagila. 
When Sri Damodar came, as he did regularly, he began to speak to Vidinity. Vidinity is Prem Nidhi or Pundrik Vidinity. Sakale Aisa Jagannatha Darshane Ajishaya Hoite Nai Ute Ki Karane. Every morning you come with me to have Darshan, Jagannatha Darshan. But uh, why haven't you gotten up yet? You're not even up. He said, Oh, in other words, what happened is that um, Surabhadamada would come every day and the two would. So Surabhadamada would come to Pundarik Vidyaniti's house because Pundarik Vidyaniti was elder in this relationship. Just like Prashivana Maharaj is older than Lita Saki. So Lita Saki, Surabhadamada would go and visit, say, Come on, let's go. Let's go for Darshan. So when he got there, Vidyaniti wasn't even dressed, he wasn't even up. He was just, hadn't put his tea lock on and bathed. He said, what's going on? Usually I meet you, we go, we get in the car and we drive to the temple for Mangalarti. I can pick up your friend. What's wrong? Oh, let me, I'll explain. Vidinidhi bale bhai hetaya aisa sabakata karamora eta asi vaisa. Oh, brother, please come. Sit down. I will explain everything to you. Damodara Asidegi, Tanadui Gala, Fulijache Charachina, Dekina, Dekina Vishala. When Surabhadamara moved closer to Pandarik Vidyanidhi and sat down next to him, then he could see clearly that the cheeks of Pandarik Vidyanidhi were severely swollen due to being slapped. Huh? Damodara Surpa Jignase Eki Kata. What is this? Why are your cheeks swollen like this? How did you get hurt? Hasya Balina Vidya Nidhi Mahashaya Shunavai Kali Gela Jateka Shamshai Punyarik Vidya Nidhi smiled before he answered, before he replied to Srivadamana. He said, My brother, Please listen to something very wonderful that happened last night. When I was resting last night, all my doubts about the starch cloth that was offered to Jagnath, they were removed. Manduya vastre reje kailun avagyan tara shasti galiye deka vidyaman. See my cheeks? You can see the evidence of punishment that I received at the hands of Jagnath and Balaram. Why did they punish me? Because I criticized the offering of starch cloth that the Brahmins made to the two lords. Aji Swapne Asi Jagannatha Balaram Dui Danda Charajena Nahika Vishram Last night, Jagnath and Balaram appeared in my dream and slapped me for two dandas continually slap me. Two dandas is one moharta. Danda is 24 minutes. It's also danda na danda. <laughs> they slapped me for 48 minutes non-stop. I mean that, they really whomped them, as we would say. If you, if you, if you whomp somebody, <laughs> that's called whomping somebody. You beat on somebody for 45 minutes, there's not much left. Usually if someone says, stop, stop, you're going to kill him. Just like Shivananda is saying, when Nityananda kicked him in the chest, his wife said, spare him, he's an old man, you're going to kill him. <laughs> there was another incident. Advaita Charya Mahaprabhu. Yeah, Advaita Charya <laughs> 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 Mahaprabhu was, was <laughs> beating him up. And and and, uh, and Advaita was old. Mahaprabhu was in 24, 24 years old or so. And, and Sita, and they, they were both about 90 90 years old, and, and he's beating the daylights out of Wait the Charya. <laughs> and his wife is saying, Stop, stop! <laughs> Once I was mock fighting with my friend Ma Mata Mangal, and he had a little son. His little son was there, and, and Mata Mangal was just lying on the ground in the, in the room. And I came and pretended I was beating him, and he was going, Oh, oh! And then his son, who was only about two years old, came and started kicking me. He said, this is, they stopped hitting my father. He came to defend his father. 
and, and we were just play acting his father and I mock fighting his father said oh oh and then the, the son didn't understand that he was only two or three so he started coming and kicking me and biting his lower lip and kicking me and very angry and defending his father <laughs> <laughs> and he was crying, he was really upset. <laughs> so after being slapped for 48 minutes, so now you can understand what should be done here. If any disciples have doubts about anything, then the Guru should slap them continually for 24 <laughs> two dundas, and then all their doubts will be removed. <laughs> This is the is this the conclusion to be taken from here? <laughs> well, I notice that you're not following the niyam of the Bhuvaneshwar temple. And Gorgovinda Swami would give class. I would be there a little early, and I would sit my usual respectful distance of about fifteen feet away or so. And I noticed that there was uh, some. Devotees were there was about six or seven foot space between the Singhasan and the, and the first row of his disciples. So I didn't want to get too close. I thought that should be for disciples. So I sat about 15 feet away. And there was this little gap. And then he wasn't there. They were waiting for him to come give class. Uh, Srila Gorgovinda Swami. And then <coughs> he sat down. As soon as he sat down, just these devotees came out of nowhere. They just swooped in like eagles, you know out of the trees, just from right and left, and grihasas, ramacharis, whatever, white saffron, and fill up that space from, from right at the nose of the vyasasan, right edge of vyasasan, to that six feet, about 50 devotees jammed in there. And I said, what, what is the uh, something special attraction here? And then, Gorgon Swami would speak. So, there's one verse, Sarvavon Bhattacharya describes, in a nutshell, this Krishna consciousness philosophy. What is that verse? What is this verse? Oh, vidya. Vairagya Vidya. Oh. You don't know? You puggle. <laughs> 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 you puggle and then you get a slap on the head. Pop! Like that. Really loud. And then, Jai Guru Dev, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so these two only sat in the front because they specifically wanted to get that love slap, that love tap from the Guru Dev's lotus hand. And uh, I don't know if they deliberately made mistakes or what, but so that was a cherished place to be in the pravachans of Srila Gorgovinda Swami. Needless to say, that was 1995 in the summertime, maybe before Ratyatra or so, and I didn't, uh, I stayed 15 feet away every day. <laughs> I wasn't that intimate, but I appreciated that the, the uh, dynamic relationship between the guru and the disciples. So they, they, he didn't slap them for 48 minutes though, just for <laughs> 48 seconds hardly, 24 seconds. So they slap me, he's telling, he's, he's telling what, what wonderful thing happened the night before, that's why he's a little late getting out for darshan the next day because he's still uh, reminiscing over that leela. And he goes on to tell more to serve Damodar. Mora paridhana vastra karili nindan ete bari gale charayena duijan. Not only that, Jagannath and Balaram slapped my cheeks and they spoke to me while they were slapping. You have criticized the clothes we wear? Gale vajijache jata angulera anguri balamate utaro Karite Nahipari. Look, look, see, you see? Damara, sort of, see the marks that Krishna, ba that Jagannath and Balaam left, their fingers marks are left on my cheeks. I couldn't pacify them, no matter what I said, they just kept beating me and beating me, non-stop. Eila Jaya Kahare Sambhasha Nahikari Galabara Haile Se Bahira I'm very, very embarrassed. I'm afraid to tell this to anyone. I, I don't want to go outside my house until my cheeks become normal again. 
Now if someone gets a black eye, they, they, they don't want to go to work, or they get some really dark sunglasses. They tell their brother to go down and buy some really dark sunglasses. I say, why? Oh, because I got a black eye and I don't want anybody to see it. Someone says, why are you wearing sunglasses? It's um, winter time and it's no sun. No, no, it's, I had some eye operation. <laughs> Etakai was embarrassed, Lajaya. Etakata an, but now everybody in the whole universe knows about it. Ekata anyatra kahite jogya nahi, barabagya hinabai mani laurirai. It's not proper to tell him about this incident. Listen, my brother Soup. In my heart, I consider myself most fortunate. So he, he's saying that. Kata, ye kata anyatra yoga nahi. Don't link anyone else. Don't tell anyone else about this confidential topic I'm revealing to you. Such experiences that the devotee has with the Lord are highly confidential and extremely private. They should only be shared with the Guru or one, maybe one very dear Vaishnava. It's not the subject for public domain or to be distributed in mass. This is what's being told here. He's so de near and dear to Henry Vidinity that, I mean, excuse me, so Dhamadar, he revealed to him and, and reminded him, please don't tell anyone. But now, Vrindavan Das Thakur has told everyone. Varashasti Pailan Aparara Anurupe Enahile Pari Atma Maha Andakupe Surupdhamadar, I have received a proper punishment from Jagannath and Balaram for my offense of criticizing the Pajaris for offering starched cloth. Otherwise, if they had not punished me, I would have fallen into a blind well and never found my way out because of the reaction of that offense. Vidyanidhi Pratideki Snehera Udhai Anandeva Sena Dhamma Dara Mahashai. Seeing the Lord's affection towards his great devotee Pundarik Vidinity, Sarudamara floated in ecstasy. Ananda Sena. So, this is the nature of the advanced devotees, the Nitya Parishads of the Lord. They're showing in their exchanges with one another the intimacies, the extreme inconceivable experiences they have with the Lord of their heart, their prananath. At the same time, they're also showing, they're teaching some points of tattva for the sadhakas. That if by chance someone has such a fortunate experience of the Lord uh, in his bhajan time, then it should be highly confidential uh, or even totally private if he has no proper person to share with. There may not be any need anyway. And the point of this verse, what we hear, is that he's floating in ecstasy to see the good fortune of his friend. Because in a plane of transcendence, there's no room for envy. And there's no room for it. Uh, in this world, we see someone, our contemporary, we see our equal being praised or going forward. We, we, we want to put them down. Prabhupada tells a story like this to emphasize this point. There were three lawyers in the high court in Calcutta. And one lawyer, the uh, senior, the, they're lawyers in the high court in Calcutta, Bengal, Prabhupada's story. And the, the high court judge, very big post, he was retiring. So one of the three lawyers was appointed as the next high court judge. So then two, uh, uh, there was four of them actually, and one was appointed. And three were talking. And one said to the other two, three, Oh, did you hear that Mr. Uh, that our friend Mr. Banerjee got promoted to be the new high court judge, district judge, whatever they call it, of the high court. And isn't that wonderful? And then another one of his friends said, Oh, yeah, he got that post, but he's probably no, he doesn't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> probably there's no salary there. So obviously he was envious and not very happy over the promotion of his friend and not himself. 
So he passed it, he relegated it to insignificant. Oh, okay, he's high court judge, but he, he's not, it must be voluntary service. He's not getting paid. And quite the opposite is true. A high court judge gets paid a phenomenal salary, more than any lawyer could ever dream about making. What to speak of the uh, extra gravy on the side. <laughs> so Prabhupada cited as an example of <laughs> envy of, uh, of contemporaries, not, a pre not trying to put down or minimize when a contemporary makes some advancement or excels you in some particular department. We, we pass it off or try to nullify it or reduce it or someone does something and they say, well, but yeah, they did this, but you know, they, they had this advantage. Or <laughs> we try to, uh, someone says, oh, so-and-so did some wonderful service. No, but you know, it's, I could have done that also if, if I had that, that, that thing. I could have played Madunga like that if I had that new Madunga or <laughs> or whatever. You know, did you hear so and so? He had, he played such nice harmonium and sang so nicely. Yeah, if I had that harmonium, I could also sing nicely. <laughs> 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 you know that was a concert harmonium. That harmonium cost twenty five thousand rupees. I know, I know that harmonium. I could have sung also, uh, but I had this cheap, you know, vena uh, har flute harmonium for a thousand rupees. <laughs> So we have our way of, of saying things also. But he's floating in ecstasy around the Basena. Very good. What nice. Maybe I'll get slapped tonight. Sakara Samparehaya Sakara Ulas Duijani Hasena Paramanandahas. As one becomes happy upon seeing the good fortune of a friend, the two both laughed in great happiness. <laughs> So the last time they met, they were also laughing. <laughs> Sri Damada and Pandrik Vidinidhi were, were discussing, there were some doubts in the mind of Pandrik Vidinidhi about this Odan Shasti festival. And I see they're offering starch cloth. The Brahmins have offered starch cloth to the Lord. It's again Shastra, starch cloth is a shud. It should be washed. They should know better. And then why have they done this? This is, is against the Smritis and Shrutis. And this is not the proper puja vidhi to do. So these puja pandas and padicha, superintendent of the temple and the pajaris, they, they're offenders. What is this? I have my doubts. Then Sri Dhammada said, no, this is the tradition here at the Sodan festival. It's always going on. And, and in fact, uh, Jagannath has never complained to the king. He's never appeared one time in a dream of the king saying so he doesn't like it. And uh, apparently it's the will of the Lord, because if he doesn't like it, he expresses his will in the dream of the Padich, uh, superintendent, Padika, Padicha, or whatever it is, or the king, and he hasn't uh, revealed his uh, contrary feelings to either one of them. And moreover, even the king himself, the king himself on this day, he also wears starch cloth on his head, which obviously is a shoot, and he doesn't wear his uh, ratna mukut, his uh, jewel stud and gold crown he prefers because the Lord of his life is wearing starch cloth and so he wants to also uh, follow suit. Like we all, Prophet wore a Swami hat and we also all wore Swami hats. Uh, we call it Swami hat because we thought only Srila Prophet wore it. Uh, it was a Swami hat when we were in America. Then we came to Vrindavan and we realized, <laughs> we realized that every single Babaji, every single uh, Avadut, everybody walking around the street was wearing what we thought was the unique uh, style of uh, Srila Prabhupada's winter wear, winter headgear. And it turned out to be the only thing that people wear in their heads in <laughs> all, of, all of Vrindavan. We call it the Swami hat. Oh, and then we felt, oh boy, I'm identifying with Prabhupada. And Prabhupada wears this really cool hat, and I have one too. And we button it under our chin, and we look, look so cute with our Swami hats. Going on Harinam Sankirtan, people thought it was a real sight. It looked rather funny too. And we we abandoned all our topis and sock hats and, and in, in favor of the Swami hat to follow the Father. And we felt so much happiness wearing it. And we, we reminded each other of Prabhupada and we remembered Prabhupada and for us it, it forever remains the Swami hat. I had one, two, different ones. So they were, so they were laughing over that matter, oh, and then he was laughing because he, he thought it was rather strange because when he was trying to remove his doubt or get his doubt removed, then Sri said, 
Actually, the Lord is the Supreme Brahman. Dharma Brahman has come. And whatever he wants to do, he can do. It's his free will and prerogative. And then, that was the argument why he accepted his charge cloth. You can't impose rules and regulations on the Supreme Brahman. He's beyond rules and regulations. Love above power, mercy above justice. So then, he said, on hearing that argument in defense of Jagannath, the Supreme Brahman, then Pundarik Vinayadi said, oh, what about the Bajais? They're also, they're also Paya Brahma. <laughs> and then he laughed. And, and Sri Dhammada didn't say yes or no. He said, in one sense, they are. There, there's Vibhu Chaitanya and Anu Chaitanya. The Lord is Vibhu Chaitanya, unlimited, transcendental, eternal, living consciousness. And the living entity is minute, finite, living, eternal, living consciousness uh, in a, as a Savite of the Supreme Enjoyer. So he yeah, went like this, and so he laughed. He was laughing at the Lord's servants, making fun of them, and that was an inda, that was an offense, and challenging their offering of service, thinking that it was offensive service, when actually it was Prem Seva. It's what the Lord wanted. It was done with a favorable mentality for the pleasure of the Lord. It was Anukulyena Krishnanu Shilanam. Anukulyena Krishnanu Shilanam. It was Anukulya. Their minds were only thinking of the Lord's pleasure, and he likes it. And my father offers charge cloth to Jagannath, and my grandfather, and my great-grandfather, and it's been going on for thousands of years. And it's an entire festival, Odan Shasti. The Lord wears starch cloth, and everybody in Arista wears starch cloth to celebrate the festival. Just like there's Rath Yatra, and Jagannath comes out on his cart, and everybody in Arista celebrates Rath Yatra. There's thousands and thousands of carts. There's little carts this big. There's big, big carts in every village. There's carts. Every single thousand, thousand, thousand. And Jagannath comes out from Dola Yatra on the swing and Chaitra Shukla pa Paksha, or the whole month of Chaitra, or at least on Chaitra Purnima. He swings on the Julan. It's called Dola Yatra. And all the rest of they have their little deities swinging that day. Julan Yatra is another festival. Then there's Chandan Yatra, and Jagannath is covered with Chandan. All the deities and rest are covered with Chandan. And San Goswami says in Hari Bhakti Vilas, then in Gaudiya Sampradaya, we should also observe all these festivals, or many of them, according to the the uh, institutional acharya, whatever institution one is in, or according to one's own rag or bhav, and his bhav seva of his personal deity, he can observe some or all of these festivals per his uh, bhajan. Some people's bhajan is they observe all festivals by nam sankirtan. This story once of Goraki Shardas Bhavaji. He said, oh, um, Krishnadas, his servant, he said, tomorrow is not Goswami's Tirubhav Mahotsav, it's Muriya, Muriya Purnima, Guru Purnima. I want to have a big, big Mahotsav. I want to have a very big Mahotsav. Acha, all right. So Krishna said, uh, Babaji Maharaj, you want to have big Vaishnava Mahotsav? Yes. So, but uh, Mahotsav means big prasad distribution, Mahaprasad distribution. And uh, Harikata and, and Murti Puja and elaborate arrangements and banana trees and mango leaves and so many decorations and ornamentations. And invitations sent out to all brahmanas and yogis and many things are done. So how we, how we don't have any money? You're in this kinchin. You're in this kinchin, Babaji. You have nothing. So no, no, no. We will celebrate the Tirubhav, the disappearance of Deva Sananda Goswami. We will chant so many likes of rounds. We'll sit down and chant many, many likes of rounds. This will be our Nam Utsav to celebrate our Sambandha Acharya, Sambandha Acharya, Gaudi Vaishnava Sambandha Tattva Acharya, Sananda Goswami's Tirubhav. So <laughs> this is also a festival to chant the holy name. So now they're laughing again, but now they're laughing uh, at this wonderful exchange. Dhammadara Sarupa Balena Shunabhai Emata Advutta Danda Deki Shunenai. Damalar Sri said, Listen, my brother, Ovidinidi, I never heard about <coughs> or seen such a wonderful punishment given out by the Lord before. Swapnyasi Shasti Kare Apane Sakshate Arashuni Nai Sabe Dekilon Tomate. Jagannath and Balaram appeared in a dream and personally punished you, Pandarik. I have never before heard of such a thing, but I can directly see that you have been punished by seeing the 
the fingerprints of the Lord on your cheeks and your swollen cheeks. Hena mate dui saka vasena santoshe latradina na janena krishna kata rase in this way the two friends floated in happiness complete satisfaction saka vasena saka vasena santoshe and they forgot whether it was day or night as they continually enjoyed topics of krishna These are the, this is the nature of harikata you can just float and there's so many verses about floating and harikata in the purport. Tavakatam ritam tatta jivanam kaviviritam kama shapaham shavanamangalam shimaratatam purigrananti jay buridajana. Oh Krishna. The nectar of your words and the descriptions of your activities are the life and soul of those suffering in this miserable material world. Narrations about you are transmitted by the great learned rishis. And when one hears your narrations, or Krishna Gata, Hari Gata, that hearing eradicates all one's sinful reactions and bestows good fortune upon whoever hears them. Narrations of your Nam, Guna, Rupa, and Leela are broadcast all over the world by such rishis and saints, and they're filled with spiritual power. Certainly, those great welfare workers who spread the message of Godhead are most munificent and kind. Hena Pundarika Vidya Nidira Prabhav Ihane Se Chandra Prabhu Bhare Bhav such was the influence of Pundrik Vidinity. Lord Gorachandra would address him as Bap, Father. Parasparsha Bhaina Karina Ganga Snan, Sabe Ganga Dekina Karina Jalapan. Pundrik Vidinity would not take bath in the Ganga. In fear of touching her with his feet. He would simply take darshan of the Ganga and drink the water. So this is a very high understanding of Ganga. E bhaktera nama laina goranga ishvar pundarika bhappabari kande navistar Lord Goranga would cry profusely and call out the name of this devotee. Oh bhap pundarik bhap pundarik bhap bhap pundarik bhap Oh father pundarik pundarika vidyanidhi Chaitra Shunile Avashitan Hare Krishna Parapadmamile. Whoever hears this discussion about the li life and lessons of Pundarik Vidinity will certainly achieve the Krishna Parapadma, the lotus feet of Krishna. Thus ends the Kanai Balai Slap Pundri Premnidi Leela. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Chanda Janna. Vrindavana dasa tachu pare juga ghan. Accepting Sri Chaitanya and Nitai Chand as my life. Accepting Sri Krishna Chaitanya and Nityananda Chand as my life and soul. I, Vrindavana, sing the glories of the lotus feet. Thus ends Antyakanda of the Chaitanya Bhagavat. Vrindavana ki jai. So now.